In this episode, Trolls, Trolls, and more trolls, I help myself to a slice of Mount Horeb. Welcome in, we are in Mount Horeb, the troll capital of the world. Today we are going to check out some art galleries, eat at a local diner, and maybe even do some holiday shopping. Later, I'll show you a hidden spot great for a quick dip or a family picnic on a warm summer day. And afterwards, I'll stop by a historical one-room schoolhouse built in the 1800s. Mount Horeb, otherwise known as the troll capital of the world, is located about 30 minutes outside of Madison. Besides the trolls, Mount Horeb is also known for some pretty interesting fun facts. In 1969, Yoohoo, the producer of a chocolate milk drink, moved to Mount Horeb. In a town known for its Norwegian heritage, an Englishman by the name of George Wright named it in 1861. He chose the name Mount Horeb after searching through the scriptures. It was selected for the countless references to the mounts, as well as the high land elevation and the beauty of the surrounding area. Another famous mount sharing the name Mount Horeb is Mount Sinai, where Moses received the Ten Commandments. Starting my stroll through Mount Horeb, I chat with a local resident and make a new friend along the way. Local Mount Horeb resident Dwayne Avang walked me down memory lane. As soon as we turned 18, old enough to drink beer, we went to Madison and on. That was a big deal for us, you know. Going to here. Madison? Just go to Madison, man. And ride around the square. And that's what everybody did in all these little towns. This used to be a bowling alley? Yeah. And now it's Everything the troll is connected end. to the troll. <laughs> How are we doing? Hi yeah, there. How are you? Doing good. Nice night, huh? Don't you think it's going to rain? Mount Horeb has a hometown feel where you might meet a friendly neighbor down at your local watering hole. People of all backgrounds, including English, German, Irish, Norwegian, Scottish, and Swiss descent, settled in the area. Yet in the late 1800s, more than 75% of the community was Norwegian. And right on the corner in that vacant lot, it used to be, a, they called it the Mount Horb House. It was a little hotel or a rooming house there. Okay. Now they're going to build a historical society. It's right, right where this vacant lot is. Okay. This is a museum now, here. Mount Horeb Area Museum offers collections and various artifacts highlighting regional artists and their crafts. Next, Duane showed me the one-room schoolhouse. So this is the schoolhouse. First one in the, in the village. Built between 1884 and 1889, this building is one of the oldest remaining buildings in Mount Horeb and serves as an important landmark in the community, as a connection to the rich heritage of the village. It was built in the 1800s? Oh, way, yeah, way back in the 1800s. It was restored and moved up here. And this is all the original? They That's just restored it? In the summer, Mount Horeb is a great getaway from the city. It's not just the famous trolls that lure the people in the area. There are several art galleries and great shops that lend a holiday spirit in the winter.
Back on Main Street, there have been many changes over the years. The main businesses and shops were located on what was once the main highway from Madison to Dubuque, Iowa. In the mid-1980s, with the reconstruction of Highway 151, many of these little towns, including Mount Horb, were bypassed. Businesses in the area were concerned about the effects the bypass would have on the economy, driving people away from the town. Because of this, the Trollway theme was born to keep Mount Horeb on the map. Back on Main Street, there have been many changes over the years. What was once known as the General Store, Hoffs had everything you needed without ever leaving town. 1916. The Hoff store was a general store that you could buy anything you ever needed to survive with. They had a grocery store on this end. They had a men's wear, women's wear, dry goods store, shoe store. And now for the more important stuff, cheese. That used to be a cheese factory. And they made the best Swiss cheese you ever saw in your life over there. According to Duane, for every one-room schoolhouse, there used to be a cheese factory. 